so much <coughs> well you've been road hard and put up wet <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah those were you are, was your family native to maryland were you, were you no you're in florida actually aren't you well now i am but yeah. my my parents were from texas and louisiana oh we got the service. george brown is here hey george you remember louis salem Lou Salem, he goes by now. <laughs> oh, I know, Louie. Yeah, how you doing, George? All right. You don't look too good, man. Well, the truth of the matter is, I do have heart disease and uh, a few other things, but uh, they're all a side effect from my cancer therapy in 2007. So well, we, uh, got, you know, we got three I, cancer survivors right here. Yeah. Oh, I'm cancer free, but the chemotherapy and the radiation, not, I had head and neck cancer. It's too long to go into, but it just knocked the shit out of me. I'm in the lucky 20% that have these side effects, you know. Yeah, we all can live know. charmed lives. I lost my ass because of cancer, but that's all right. <laughs> well, you know, the cancer scared the hell out of me because you think you're going to die. And after the treatments, 18 months, hey, you <laughs> were. You did great, but this damn heart disease is with you every minute of every day yeah. as to how active you can be and stuff like that. And uh, So did you, you have know. throat cancer? Yeah, I had, head and, I had head and neck cancer and I never smoked. I had the cancer that they think that they're giving vaccines to men and girls for now prior to age, I think 30. It's the HP, HP PV virus, yeah. the one that women carry. Uh, apparently, they've determined it can be sexually transmitted because there's a lot of non-smokers yeah. from our generation that end up with this. So, uh, but I'm too old. I, I, the vaccine wouldn't help me now, and I would have been too old even if they had it when I was 50. But they didn't. So you know, it's just it's just life. I've been did blessed. You, in many did you ways. marry? Did you marry? I've been married 41 years, my second marriage. I lost my son to a drug overdose, 37 years old, in April of last year, accidentally. Oh, wow. That's devastating. It is devastating and uh, really changes your perspective on things. We're taking care of his son right now. He's five, so that's... Thank God my, my wife is German and uh, she's going to bury us all. She's 79 and running around like she's 40. <laughs> she's so four. How are you doing, Dick? How am I do I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah, well, I can tell you all about stents. <coughs> I got, you have uh, a few? Yeah, I got four in the groin and left leg and two in the right leg. Oh, wow. You're going to fe femoral artery? Yeah, it's pulmonary artery disease, they call it. Pulmonary, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, did, you just, a, uh, did you have a blood clot? Uh, was this discovered with you had a clot or did you have an event or? Who, who, who are we you, speaking to? George. Uh, I was having trouble with my legs. Yeah. I still so have trouble you. with my legs, but uh, yeah. not like that. <laughs> and, it's, and it's funny when you watch the. Uh, you know, local, yeah. and I'm watching them, uh, watching the screen and the, the the cathode going down the uh, artery, and you know, that's really weird. Yeah, you know, I, I was in the X-ray business my whole life, so I met the head and neck guy when this all started. Uh, that's where the, the 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 what do they call it? Primary caregiver sent me. I had a lump on my neck. And he's looking and I'm wide open and I hear him whisper, squamous cell carcinoma. 
and I just about came a foot out of the chair. Did you, did you say know. screaming cell carcinoma? Yeah, yeah screaming cell carcinoma. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, you know, it's, that's just, we all have the stories and the, uh, the chemotherapy. I wish I would have, I elected to be unconscious, but for the damage it did, I wish I'd stayed awake. So that's an uh, idea. You know, what was a, going on. You know, I said to my wife, that was nothing. You know? I got a story about chemotherapy for you. When I was going through it, they uh, had the metering machine set too fast. Oh. And you had to be there for an hour, <laughs> hour, almost two hours. Hour like that. Well, because they had it set too fast, they had to pump two bags of saline in, it, in me. Oh, and I had to pee something terrible by the time I got to go. They had to put yeah. a catheter in and have a drain there. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, Dick, that's nothing like having to, to sit in that chair and find out that they the, the machine is set up to pump that stuff in too quickly. Mm. Dick, what kind of cancer did you have? I'm sorry? Did you, you had cancer also? Yeah, I had I had two. Uh, um, because I'm slow just by nature, I had um, uh, adenocarcinoma of the lung. And um, I had a little tiny spot on my left lower lobe. And I, the surgeon wanted to cut out that lobe. And I said, holy no, I have enough trouble breathing, much less you take 25% of my lung capacity. So I had it, I had it shot with radiation. It only took four, four days in a row. And I went off to Paris on a vacation. Wow. So that was that was uh, number two. Number one was back in April of 2013. I had uh, two of 12 samples in my um, uh, what do you call it um, prostate. Uh, one had two percent cancer. The other one had 50 percent cancer. So got it really early. Oh, so cool. I've been you know knock on spinach there. Uh, I knew from early, um, what do you call it, um, heart cath, I think way back, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, my, uh, my GP uh, did a survey on my family heart history. And almost, almost all my aunts and uncles died with at least some sort of heart problem. So they found about 30% blockage 10 or 15 years ago. So I knew with my body weight being terribly obese, et cetera, that I'm gonna have blockages. I was just so lucky that I also had um, AFib. I had an event that I- You had AFib? How long, and you, how old are you doing? Say what? You don't sound like you're too good, buddy. You have AFib now, or you had a? I, I, well, I have a condition that has presented AFib, but I couldn't feel it. Yeah. But I've had, I've had three ablations. Oh, you've had and, ablations. Yeah. yeah, and then I went in. I have what the, I, I met <clears throat> my uh, cardiologist today. <clears throat> Pardon me, I got a bad throat. I can empathize with you because yeah. I'm hurting here. Um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, PVCs, uh, premature ventricular. Uh, um, <laughs> I almost said uh, ventricular ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> premature, right? Uh, that's a different problem. Contractions. Yeah. But the PVCs are what what I'm showing now. So next week I'm going on a, a one month monitor trip. So I have to wear the monitor for a month and then give them the data. And um, I'm, I'm what's called a type two heart, wait a minute, 
class two heart block. It's an atrioventricular heart block type one. If I was going to type two, they, I would have already had the pacemaker. Wow, so I wow. could live, I could live another 10 years with no assistance or I could make it. You got one, huh? I've got a defibrillator. Oh, wow. It's a special oh. kind. It's a defibrillator. It's never gone off. I've had it six years, but whatever. Hey, are all of us 74 or 73 yeah. or something like that? Yeah. George yeah. is a little older than us, aren't you, George? What? Oh, yeah, I just turned 75 last November. Oh. Yeah, he's so few. I'm, I'm turning March 19th. I'm turning 75. Yeah. Oh, are you? I'll be 75 in December. Um, and, you know, I just I had a... anything could have prepared people. Uh, this, the, I feel the least prepared for this phase of life than <laughs> anything I've gone through. Uh, you know, growing up, whatever. I mean, yeah. you know, you get a girlfriend, you adapt, you get your first whisker, you adapt, or you lose your first job, you get your first great job, whatever. <laughs> but when you get over 65, there is no roadmap. Yeah, yeah. There really isn't. Well, you know what they say, getting old is not for sissies. <laughs> no. No, I'm, I'm grateful to be here, of course. I have yeah. a good family, and uh, I... So I'm independently on the on the financial side. I can sit here on the couch and watch with the rifleman from 1966. So, were, were, were you were you selling uh, medical? Yeah, products? I was. I, here's the thing: the stuff that Fuji made and GE is very complicated. They can't pay doctors to explain it to doctors or physicists. This is again in imaging. So I was industry trained for 10 years at a lesser company. I left, I was 31 and they offered me a job and you know, the rest is history. You just have to have a knack to be able to speak to a physicist or a radiology with respect or a radiologist and explain, you know, image quality is their big concern when you go electronic. Right. But you know, it's like I said, they all bitched and moaned and wanted their films to hold in their hand and stick in their trunk and lose. <laughs> but once they got really networked on DICOM, which is a medical uh, platform, uh, and they could go home on their PC and see it, yeah. not in diagnostic quality, but in very good resolution. Oh, yeah. They just shut up. Yeah. You know. It, I like it, I like when I go to a dentist that's got digital. If they don't have digital, they shouldn't be practicing because one of the biggest advantages is dental. Yeah. Dental and mammography. The last three years I was a mammography consultant because those guys, the mammographers, think they know everything. I don't care yeah. what it is. They know everything. Yeah. And uh, without getting into detail, the mammography digitally is far superior. One reason, basic reason, it's all the same exposure. There's not light and dark films. Yeah, so it's, uh, because there are no films. All the stuff was so overpriced, but it's all come down the storage. Like I said, 15 terabytes, that's doable now. And you know, it's, uh, I got out at the right time for me. I played a lot of golf and You're I like 15 California. 15 terabytes I, for a whole hospital? For a good size hospital. Sure, now, I, got, include, I got 15 terabytes sitting right here on my desk. Yeah. Well, that would include, well, in 1993, you didn't. That was a lot. That was a lot. That was $100,000 uh, worth of storage. <laughs> yeah, well, for, I'm just looking for my CD burner. Yeah, for medical, you need the word and the image. And, they, and the image has to be. Uh, at least a 4K image at the diagnostic view. Yeah. So it, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's it, you. I'd put you to sleep. Try well, to. George and I both it. speak computer. <laughs> well, I I do on imaging and uh, bit depth. Do you know what bit depth is? Have you ever heard that term? You know, contrast. It's what? Bit depth. Bit depth. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you know all that all the all the terms in radiology were analog and photographic, and that language had to be converted to digital. And doctors are too smart to admit they don't understand. Yeah. So they bring in the physicists, and they barely understand. They understand enough, and then they talk and they say, "Okay, we'll try it." You know, that's that's what I did. <laughs> Uh, that's what I was good at because a lot of people, you know, I never mind. It's 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 just, yeah, but, it's just but a you, niche you, I fell into, and you did you did well I did selling well. that stuff. So you yeah. you retired at fifty five. Yeah, fantastic. And you're where in California? Well, we lived when I was working, and we had a yogurt store. We lived in in poor man's Malibu. We were five hundred yards from the ocean. We lived there nineteen years. I took it for granted. Uh, you know, a hot day in the summer was 79. You couldn't tell February from August at, at noon. Then I got, uh, you know, the bug up my butt to get out, <coughs> so to speak, and enjoy life a little. So we moved to Temecula, which is a semi-desert community about 120 miles away. Still very populated, you know. It's a to, big... to, to the east, right? To the east and the south. Yeah. And about 18 miles from the ocean. And that makes it a uh, semi desert climate. Not as hot as What was the name of the town? Temecula. Known for its wine. T E M E C U L A. Huh. That sounds Aztec. Well, it's an Indian name, and it means and it means the Valley of the Smokes, meaning that we have in when in in June, May and June, we have lingering uh, ocean effect of uh, cloud layer. Right. You know, when the clouds right. come in off the ocean, and they they burn off around twelve here. Sometimes in West LA, they don't burn off to about two. You know, it's how uh, far away are you from the Mexican border? Oh, not that far, 51 miles. Yeah, so yeah, we thought. have border patrol, we have regular cops and border patrol. Believe me, it's it's dangerous around that area. I mean, I wouldn't go to Tijuana when I was 25. Uh, God, that's a long time ago, but say 30 even. It was a very popular thing to do to go to Tijuana on the weekend buy some cheap pottery and, <laughs> you know, have some of those drinks that are so strong and all that. Now, um, I, I don't think it's, I, did, I, there's not many. Besides the, the son that you lost, did you have any other children? Yeah, I had uh, <clears throat> a daughter who's 40 now. She's doing well. And with my present life, that's her. And then I had two daughters with my first wife who I, married to for 10 years they're doing doing well so uh, we have a lot of visitors shall we say we all know how that goes grandpa's quite not as uh, active as he once was in terms of going to yeah. going there you know hey lou how's your little brother uh charlie yeah charlie because uh -huh. i well i read into your mother one time and she said that Charlie was out there with you for a while. He was. He lived with us in my liberal phase when I was very young, because he had a lot of habits with marijuana. And he, he, he actually ended up playing the guitar with the, with the Charlotte Symphony. I mean, he learned to read and write music. He taught professionally. He really mastered that instrument. But he's a loner. He's living, I believe, in Virginia now or Oregon. And he sends me an email every once in a while. He's in Virginia now. And he has, uh, he teaches guitar. He gets enough money to pay his bills and he takes a week off and does whatever he does. I, I don't know. He, he claims that he missed the golden generation, which would be me and my sister, I guess. You know, that he did 
when he was in the eighth grade, ninth, so you know it was. You you mentioned you mentioned Toby Prodgers. You you yeah. and he played golf together in high school. We here's the thing. I was a golf nut, probably one of two in the or one of one in the school. And I mean, I was pretty good at 15, 16. I was maybe a five handicap or a four. And uh, our home club, I worked in the summers at Andrews Air Force Base Golf Course. So once, and I didn't really know Toby that well, but once, one time I saw him out there and I said, you're Toby from Strath, oh yeah. And we just hit it off and we played in the spring and we played and we got the idea that who was that colonel that taught algebra? <laughs> Cooper. Colonel, Cooper. Colonel Cooper. Cooper. Colonel Cooper. We got Colonel the idea Cooper and the we, cabbage heads. <laughs> yeah, we we should approach him with the idea to start a golf team. And I don't know whether he needed to be uh, have his resume pumped up or what, but he agreed. <laughs> And uh, we actually fielded a team and uh, we were the first team. We played a lot of those Bethesda type schools, which we were a little outclassed. Bethesda. I mean, there were more kids that played golf in that direction. <laughs> Bethesda Chevy Chase, yeah. Yeah, and we probably won 40% of the matches. And uh, gee, I hope they have a team today because every high school does. <laughs> But Toby and I, Toby was more, did you say he was a judge? Yeah. Uh, a spirit, uh, uh, state or federal or? No, state. Uh, state he, he's, he's in Marietta, Georgia. He's married, oh. got a couple of kids. And he's still, he's still judging. I invited him to come on and uh, say hello to friends. He said, I'm, I'm still working. <laughs> I, I have to keep a low profile. <laughs> well, he, he was always... A typical, was your dad in the Air Force or in the service? Mine was in the Navy, and he, but he worked for Library of Congress. Oh. But we were members of the Officers Club, so I had privileges over there. Yeah. He was, uh, he was a pretty mature 16-year-old, as I recall. And uh, I think he had uh, a lot more sway with Colonel Cooper than I did. Uh, but uh, it, it, it worked, and I couldn't believe we actually had, after our approaching him in the next spring, we actually had matches scheduled. Is, is there anybody from uh, Surrattsville that, that you're curious about? Have you been in touch with anybody? <clears throat> well, like I said, uh, Thomas Gwynn, I spoke with before he died, I saw his email and said, him, and we were good friends. And uh, Bob Riley. Yeah. I, we all used to hang out. And uh, in terms of Surrattsville, we would, you know, we, we ate lunch together and things. And we, if, you know. If you, if you want some time, I might, if you're on, if you're willing to come on the Zoom thing, we can arrange a uh, three-way so you can see uh, Bob Riley. What's he doing? Uh, he's retired. He was, uh, he was a school teacher turned administrator. And then um, he's, uh, he married a girl from uh, Surrattsville, a, a earlier, a later class. And she passed away of breast cancer. She had oh my God. A, a, a tough, tough time there. But um, they were here in Florida, in Palm Beach County, and um, he, he and I, uh, well, he actually recruited me to teach all-terrain vehicle safety, uh, and, and we did that on, as a sideline. He used to teach motorcycle safety in Montana, I think, or Wyoming. Wow. And then, uh, so that was his specialty was, you know, driver's ed and that sort of thing. Yeah. But then he got into the bus, bus management, transportation systems and stuff. And so he became a, um, what do you call it, a, a, an administrator for the Transportation Association 
of the U U.S. or, you know, he was on a committee or board. He traveled a lot. Anyway, uh, he, he uh, and his wife, he retired and they bought a, uh, a bed and breakfast in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And wow. uh, Judy and I went out there and stayed with them for a couple of days while we toured the Rockies. And after his wife passed away, I think it was last year, year before, um, Bob, uh, Bob started, well, he kept his B&B, &B, but he brought his, one of his kids in and to, you know, help run it. But uh, his kids have sort of scattered and he now, he's, I think he said he's toying with the idea of living six months of the year in uh, Hawaii. Uh, and yeah, the, that's uh, my, uh, I have a daughter, my wife's second, my current wife's second daughter lives in Hawaii, has for, she got her x-ray license uh, type and went over there and never came back. I mean, when she comes back to visit, but it's quite a different place to live. Yeah. For someone raised in the contiguous United States, it's yeah, it's quite a life change style. Well, I'm in I'm, I'm in over Florida. There. I used to go over there with Fuji, and I the 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 rep over there told me he said, "Look, whatever you do, do not wear a suit in into the hospital." And this is in about eighty four ish, five ish, and I can tell you the doctors in Los Angeles proper at that time, always had on a tie and a white coat and a white shirt and maybe maybe had their suit suit on, you know, there but you know, if you walked in in a Hawaiian shirt, it would look odd. <laughs> but they I, if you think LA is laid back, I've never seen boy, they're relaxed. Trust me. It's sort of it's sort of like Hawkeye, uh, <coughs> Hawkeye Pierce and from Mash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're uh, I'm sure they're all great doctors and everything, but what a laid back environment. Yeah, Florida's Florida's pretty laid back. I I don't well, wear you, white shirts. I haven't worn a white shirt in fifteen years. <laughs> well, this this what about uh, now? Did you say Jay Paget died? Unfortunately, yes. yeah. He, oh, he, had, he had stage four cancer and didn't know it. He just, he, oh. he just, he was so busy with his company, apparently. Was I, that the real uh, estate, was that in the real estate business? No, he was, he had a soils testing lab or business. And so whenever anybody would have to build around <laughs> DC, they would have to have their soils tested, you know, for mm -hmm. compaction and Radon, radon well, possibly, yeah. So anyway, he he had a he had a quite a successful company, and uh, well, did he, he go past young? No I mean, was he, how old was he? Do you happen to know when he passed? Our age. He's our, our age. age. Yeah. Wow. His mom, yeah, well, you know, when I went, it was like little house on the prairie. They had that house on the corner of Allentown Road and. Where the gas station is now. Springs, I can't remember the name of the road. But it was, you know, built probably in the late 1800s or early 1900s. I mean, it was well kept and nice, but it was not brick. And he had all that land that they ended up building Crossland High School on. And when I'd go over there, you know, I was, I, I just, I mean, yes, Mrs. Padgett, no, Mrs. Padgett. I mean, that was just the way we did it then. And well, she, she she was a school teacher. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you couldn't. And uh, we and he took care of his little brother hoop on the barn, and we used to. I remember used to, that Jay was yeah, taking. And we used to shoot. We used to shoot skeet in that field <laughs> with our shotguns, and one day. This is when we're about 16, so that would have been close to 64. But we were 16. We noticed a police cruiser, the grass was maybe eight inches high. You know, it was kind of weedy looking. 
he gets off the farmer drive and he drives across the field at us and we're shooting out at the woods at the skeet. And he said, boys, did you know that it's a $50 fine for every round you fire in Prince George's County? <laughs> it's not at a certified gun range. And oh, we were so scared. We were gonna get in trouble. Who, who, who told you that? The policeman. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, in Prince George's County now. Did he hold that his hand to collect your 50 bucks? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I've got some relatives that are policemen up, still up there, or retired policemen. I I didn't, oh, we didn't get the smart, believe me, to Bill, <laughs> Bill Lloyd and Jay and myself, it was. And uh, no, we were, we went back home with our tails between our legs thinking we'd. Hell, we, we, we played football down there in that. Field. Yeah. Yeah, we, we did, oh, we had so much, well, we used to go hunting for crows in that field. And um, I don't think I ever, they're the smartest thing that flies in the world, oh. I think. Crows, they're just impossible. They have sentries, you know. We're just a bunch of kids with shotguns. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. I, I wanna give you guys a heads up. Um, we, have, we have about, um, five more minutes to, b before we get kicked off. Okay. So it's- Tell me uh, what Bill Lloyd is doing. Does anybody know? Yeah, he's, he still skis and uh, he walks every day. Um, he answers the phone or, or returns calls, but he doesn't do email. And I don't, I don't know why, but I, I've never, I've never challenged him. Um, just a little background on he, he went to, uh, was it Davidson? Um, or he went to a college in Pennsylvania and he, and he, um, he, he did languages. He, he did, I think he did Greek and Latin. And then he ended up going into the army, became a ranger and, uh, and a, uh, came a, a master parachutist. So he was um, he was working with, you know, new soldiers and jumping them out of airplanes and stuff like that. I believe he came back and took over his father's uh, construction company, but I don't know that for a fact. I haven't really talked to him about it. Um, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, we we saw Judy and I went back to D.C. and there was a. Um, a, a mini reunion and Summers and Bill came and Summers was just unfortunately humongous. I got really, really fat, but Summers made two of me and I felt so bad for him. But uh, Bill looked great. He was slim and trim. So. Uh, oh, he was very fastidious and aware of his appearance. Oh, One well. time we were wrestling around and he had this black, I'll never forget this. He had this one black hair going out of his shoulder. You know, he wasn't a hairy guy. And we were, we were in t-shirts. So I was on top and I pulled the hair out and I never saw him get mad, mad. <laughs> he said, you pulled my lucky hair. <laughs> lucky he hair. Me off him. I went sailing his hair. I said, I didn't even know what to say. <laughs> but uh, he was in pretty close proximity, and we and he played golf too. And uh, he he didn't take to the game like Toby and I and some of the others. But uh, but uh, we, we what about uh, Beverly Burns? And she was in love with Michael. She's she's on Facebook. Um, I I don't uh, I don't communicate with her very much, but. Uh, she's on Facebook if you want to look her up. Do you remember that teacher, Mr. Klein? Yeah. Don he's Klein? I think he's the best yeah. teacher I ever had. What did he teach? History or political science. He was, well, you know, he, there was no messing around in his classroom. Mm -mm. Big yeah. man. Big man and knew how to command without 
I saw him yeah. bring John Miller around the around the collar and pick him up and drag him out of the classroom. And now when I say drag, he didn't drag. He went, he took his arms straight out and Neller's feet never touched the floor as he took him out the classroom. <laughs> I, 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 did, I did something similar, only it was a poke in the kid's chest and, and it, it pushed him back up against the wall. He bumped his head. The guy was as big as me, right? I was a substitute teacher. He went and complained to the principal and I got fired. <laughs> it's a different yeah. world out there. <laughs> it's great that you can laugh about something like that now and we all can laugh about things. Well, yeah, you know, matter. I was a member of Riviera Country Club for 37 years. I re resigned in 2017, but I joined when I was 34, I think. And I just didn't get, I mean, I, I had a kid, I, but you know, my parents were pretty, but there's just some things that, that people did back in the day that, I don't know, you, you have to, you can't say anything no. to a woman. I mean, not that I would now, but it, it's a different set of social rules, I guess. Yeah. You know, and now the kid would probably go in and say, I can't move my neck, you know. He broke my neck or something, you know. It's well, really crazy. you know, it's the li life has become more humane and more equitable. Do, do you remember the digital revolution, right? Yeah. But do you, you? But before that, there was the sexual revolution. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, yeah don't, I don't. I don't know what, how many I, here's times. My, here's my take on the sexual revolution. It started out. One of their messages was that women like sex just as much as men, you guys don't have, if that were true, there'd be babies hanging from trees. <laughs> you know, it's, it, I don't think the sex drive, all of us felt between the ages of 17 and probably 40 are similar to a, uh, a, a young woman. They might be similar, but God, when you get five guys together when you're 25 and by the second drink, what are you but, talking about? But the timing's different. It's, <laughs> yeah, the it, it, timing's well, it was, different. we were Randy <laughs> early. They were Randy late. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's well, listen, point. guys, if, if we get, if we get uh, just <clears throat> cut off like that, it's, we're getting close. I don't know how much, wait a minute, we got three minutes. Uh, let me just ask you quick, what, what percent of our class or our general Friends or stayed in the Washington area, would you say? Have not no much. Idea. Not much. Not much. 30, I figured I, with the people that moved down here after that, uh, it was like 34% <laughs> of our class was living in Florida. Wow. But that, you know, a lot of them have moved back. Really? Uh, back, yeah. back up in the area. Um, I know that. Uh, Dickie Dickerson is up in New Jersey, isn't he? Uh, yeah, just over the just over the Maryland line or Delaware. It's either yeah. New Jersey or Delaware. I think it's Delaware. He because he was a uh, police inspector. Because right. I used to run into him every time, almost every day at lunchtime uh, when I was working in D.C. Um, wow, that yeah. sounds like a lot of people. Do, do you curious. remember? Do you remember Roy Revis? Yeah, yeah, he was he was on with us uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, pardon me. He's he and his wife they have a they bought a beautiful home in Ocean Isles, uh, uh, North Carolina. Carolina, but they're they're going back to Maryland to be closer to their kids, and to uh, go into a retirement home. So uh, wow. you know. Everybody has. I've yeah. already I've already picked out the cemetery that I'm going to be buried in. So, the only thing I have left to do is to is to get an urn. <laughs> going to have to be well, a big ass urn though. We'll get some money too, because well, when it comes to bury my son, I just you know I just wrote the checks, but it's not to do it with is, all the frills. It's, it's not cheap. Dead grand, you know. That is buried up in. Uh, 
on the uh, Route 5 bypass from at Waldorf at Trinity, and that's and in the mausoleum. It, I'll, I'll be buried there. But, uh, you know, right now yeah. I'm still here in Florida, but I'm, gonna, I'm buying, I will be buying shortly, you know, casket and paying for whatever it takes to, to, to get me from here back up to there and so on and so yeah. forth. Um, well, it was it was a special time, you know, Dennis. Uh, we had an American Indian in our class, or Indian heritage, Caruth, somebody Caruth. Richard Caruth. Richard Caruth. You ever Is hear he... from him? No. No, I haven't seen him at all. No. We have less than a minute. Okay. Well, look, uh, George. It's good seeing you again, and Dick. I, I'm, I, the memories are starting to come back, and you were a very big guy. I mean, I'm not saying you're fat. You're, you were always a big guy. Yeah, I remember that. But I'm shrinking. Uh, <laughs>